everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to find sum of a finite series by using method of differences. If this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe my channel by hitting the subscribe button below so that you won't miss any videos later. If you find that this video is useful, please share to your friends, to your students, or to anybody who need this. So, let's start the lesson right now. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use method of differences to find the sum of a series. Let's uh, look at this question. By using method of differences, find the sum of this series. When using method of differences to find the sum, the general term must be expressed in the form of difference of two terms. But when we look at this question, the general term is in single terms. So, first thing we need to do is, I'm going to change the general terms here into partial fraction. So, now first thing we need to find the value of A and value of B. In order to find the value of A and value of B by using comparing the coefficient of the terms on the left and on the right, the first thing is I must change the denominator so that the denominator on the left hand side and the right hand side is the same. So now after I combine the expression on the right hand side, since the denominator is the same, so now I can ignore the denominator and I focus at the numerator part. So to find the value of A and B, I simply choose a suitable value of R. Okay, let's say now, right now, I want to find the value of A, I don't want the value of B. If I want to cancel off the B, I must choose value of R equals 0. Because when R equals to 0, B will disappear. So when I substitute R with 0, then from here, I'll get value of A is 1 over 2. Then after that, I'm going to choose another value of R. So this time, I'm going to choose value of R equals negative 2 because when I choose value of R equals negative 2, so A will be cancelled off. Now I can find the value of B. So when I choose R equals negative 2, and when I substitute R with negative 2, then from here, I will get B is negative 1 over 2. Now, after I have got the value of A and value of B, now I'm going to substitute the value of A and B back into the partial fraction. So now I have got the partial fraction of the general term where the partial fraction is in the form of difference of two terms. Now, I'm going to find the sum of this series. So, first, I'm going to substitute this general term with the partial fraction where the partial fraction is in the form that is difference of two terms. But before I start, I find that I can factorize the common factor that is 1 over 2. So, I factorize the 1 over 2. Now, I'm going to list down each term, start from r equals 1 up to r equals n. Now, for the first term, when r is equal to 1, I substitute into r equals to 1, it is 1. When r it is 1, so this becomes 3. For the second term, when r is equal to 2, it is 1 over 2, then 2 plus 2 is 4. Then when r is equal to 3, 1 over 3, then 3 plus 2 is 5. Then when r equals 4, 1 over 4 minus 4 plus 2, 6. 
and when I continue and up to the last term when r is equal to n, then the last term is 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 2. So when using method of differences to find the sum, most of the term in between will be cancelled off. Let's say, for example, negative 1 over 3 will be cancelled off with positive 1 over 3. Negative 1 over 4 will be cancelled off with positive 1 over 4. But I found that if I list the terms this way, I find that it is not easy to identify which term cancel off with which term. So I decide not to use this way. I decide to list the term vertically. When r is equal to 1, when r is equal to 2, I list down here. When r equals 3, I list down here. And r equals 4, and so on. I list the term vertically because if I list the term vertically, I can very easily identify which term can be cancelled off with which terms. For example, here I can see very clear negative 1 over 3 can be cancelled off with positive 1 over 3. Then negative 1 over 4 can be cancelled off with positive 1 over 4. Negative 1 over 5 can be cancelled off with the term below here. From the pattern, we know that the following term is positive 1 over 5. Then when we continue, negative 1 over 6 can be cancelled off with the term here. From the pattern of the, of the number, I can see that this one is positive 1 over 6 and so on. So during the summation, by using the method of differences, most of the term in between will be cancelled off. But some of the number at the beginning of the series and some number at the end of the series will remain. For example, the term 1 over 1 and 1 over 2 at the beginning of the series here, they are not cancelled off. Now when we look at the pattern of the series here, we can see that this is the term when r equals 1. This is when r equals 2. So from the series, at the beginning of the series, this term will be cancelled off. All the term after that will be cancelled off. Now we have first two terms. When r is 1, when r is 2, these two terms remain. So the number of the term remain at the beginning of the series will be same as the number of term remain at the end of the series. Okay, so means based on the pattern at the beginning of the series, we can predict which term at the end of the series remain. So it is just like a reflection. By using this corner, reflect to this corner. So since first two term at the beginning of the series remain. So when we come to the series, we can predict that this term when r equals n will remain and another term when r is n minus 1 remain. So the number of term remain at the beginning of the series and the number of term remain at the end of the series is the same. So based on this pattern, now we continue. So when we continue, since we know that the last two terms here will remain. So we start listing the term, start from the last term. So at the last term, r is equal to n. So when r is equal to n, the last term is 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 2. From the pattern here, we know that the second last term here, this term also remains. So we need to find the term at the second last. The last term is n. So from the number line, if the last term is n, means the term before, that is the second last term, is n minus 1. So if we want to find the number here, the terms at the second last, we substitute r with n minus 1. So when we substitute r with n minus 1, r with n minus 1, then when we simplify, we will get n minus 1, n minus 1 plus 2 is n plus 1. So this is the second last term. And 
from the pattern here, we know that this term will be cancelled off with this term. So this 1 over n will be cancelled off with another term here. So we must show this term out. So this is the term number 3, start from the last term. So that is the term before n minus 1. The term before n minus 1 is n minus 2. So when we substitute r with n minus 2, r with n minus 2, then when we simplify, we will get this one. So when we see, look at the pattern here. This is positive 1 over n will be cancelled off with negative 1 over n. So if you can show these terms cancel off with this term, then we can stop. Okay. So means this 1 over n minus 1, same thing will be cancelled off with another term here. That is negative 1 over n minus 1. So same thing, this term will be cancelled off with another term here. So now we can say that most of the term in between the series will be cancelled off and uh, some of the term at the beginning of the series and some of the term at the end of the series will remain. So now we will list down all the terms that remain. That is 1 over 1, 1 over 2 at the beginning, at the end of the series, this one is negative 1 over n plus 1, negative 1 over n plus 2. So then after that, when we simplify, so we will get this is the sum of the series. However, during the examination, you do not have to show all these colorful bubbles. So what you need to do, you just need to write your working step clean and clear this way. And please do not use a stroke here to show that now you want to cancel off negative 1 over 3 with positive 1 over 3. Please do not use a stroke to show you cancel because the examiner might think that the stroke here means you want to cancel off your solution step. So you just leave your solution in this way, clean and clear, so the examiner will understand that your solution. So next, we are going to the next example. By using method of differences, find the sum of this series. So when we look at the general term here, the general term here consists of three terms. So by using the method of differences, so same thing, we will list the term of the series one by one, start from r equals 1 up to r equals n. So for the first one, when r is equal to 1, so we substitute r with 1. r with 1, 1 plus 1, 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. When r is equal to 2, r is equal to 2, 2 plus 1, 3, 2 plus 2 is 4. For 2 over 2, we do not have to simplify 2 over 2, we do not have to write it as 1. So we just leave the fraction as 2 over 2. Then when r is equal to 3, 2 over 3, 3 plus 1 is 4, 3 plus 2 is 5. When we continue, r is equal to 4, 4 plus 1 is 5, 4 plus 2 is 6. Same as this one, 2 over 4, we do not have to simplify the fraction becomes 1 over 2. We just keep the fraction as normal. So, and we continue. So, when we want to identify which term to be cancelled off, we try to find the fraction with the same denominator. So when we look at the fraction with the same denominator, when we sum all these three terms together, we find that it is equal to zero. So it means all these three terms will be cancelled off. So this is negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1 plus 1 means zero. So all these three terms will be cancelled off. Then when we continue to the term with the denominator 4, we find that all the terms, all the fractions with denominator equals to 4 will be cancelled off too. And we continue the term with the denominator of 5. 
So according to the pattern, so sure this term will be cancelled off and so on. So when we look at the pattern of the term of this series, so the first three terms remain. One, two, three. So one, two, three. So based on this term, when we continue up to the end of the series, so the number of the term remain is same as the beginning of the series. So we can see here we have three terms remain. So at the end of the series here, it is just like we do the reflection. So this corner will reflect to here. So we will find that at the end of the series, so these three terms will remain. Okay, so here we can predict these three terms will remain based on the pattern of the term at the beginning of the series. So now when we continue, I go to another slide. So I straight away go to the last term. So last term when R is equal to N. So when I substitute, when R is equal to N, this is the 1. Then from here, we know that this term remain, this term remain, this term will be cancelled off. So we need to list down to show that this term to be cancelled off. So means I need to list down uh, the second last and the third last. So the last one, R equals to N. So the second last means R equals N minus 1. So when we substitute r with n minus 1, r with n minus 1, r with n minus 1, and we simplify, we will get this one. We need to list out one more, r equals n minus 2. So when r equals n minus 2, n minus 2, n minus 2, when we simplify, then we will get this one. So same thing, we try to look at the terms with the same denominator that is n. So we find that, see, this is negative 3 plus 2 plus 1. So finally, this three term will be cancelled off. So if we continue, the term with the denominator n minus 1, n minus 1, sure will be cancelled off. So finally, we will have six terms remain. Three terms at the beginning, three terms at the end of the series. So now we list down all the terms that is remain. So there are this one, one, two, three at the beginning, then three terms, uh, one over n plus one, then the second term and third term. So we list down all the terms remain. So now we simplify the constant that is three over two, and we simplify the term consists of the unknown n. Then we'll get this one. So finally, this is the answer of the sum of the series by using method of differences. Now let's look at this question. Some of the question before you are asked to use the method of differences to find the sum of a series, the question will ask you to show certain identity. For example, this one, you are asked to verify this identity. Then, you have to use this identity to help you to find the sum of the series. So, first, we try to show this one. So, first, we combine the denominator. So, 2R minus 1, you will be multiplied with R plus 1. 2R plus 1 will be multiplied with R minus 1. So when we simplify, we try to expand the numerator. Then after simplify, you get 2R. So R and R can be cancelled off. Then finally, you verify the identity given. So next, because the word hands means you must use this identity to help you to find the sum by using method of differences. So now, if I want to find the sum of this series, I have to use this identity. So if you want to use this identity, 
the general form here must be exactly same as this one. But we find that the general term, the numerator here is 1. But the identity, the numerator is 2. So means you have to change this number 1 becomes 2. So when we change 1 to 2, so here we must replace that with 1 over 2. So when we change the general term here exactly as this one, then only you can replace this general term with the identity here. So now we replace the general term with the identity given here. Then after that, by using method of differences, we try to list out all the terms. So we have to be very careful. R started from what number based on the question given. So in this question, R start from 2. It is not started from 1 as normal. So now, the first term R start from 2. So we list down when R is equal to 2. Now we substitute all the R with 2. Then we get 3 over 2 minus 5 over 6. Now for the second term, when R is equal to 3, we substitute all the R with 3. And then we simplify, we get 5 over 6 minus 7 over 12. And when R is equal to 4, we substitute R with 4. And we simplify, we get this one. And so on. So now we are going to find the fraction with the same denominator. For example here, the denominator 6. This one is negative 5, this one is positive 5. So this negative 5 will be cancelled off with this positive 5. Then for the denominator of 12, this is negative 7. This one is positive 7, so sure the negative will be cancelled off with the positive and so on. Then after that, we look at here, all the terms in between will be cancelled off. Now you have the first term remain. So from here, we have one term remain, not cancelled off. So we can predict that later on in the end of the series, it is also we have one term, it is not cancelled off. So therefore, we go to the last term. So based on the pattern just now at the beginning of the series, so we can predict that this term will remain and this term will be cancelled off. So we need to list out one more uh, term that show that we cancel off this. Since the last term R is equal to N, means the second last term R is equal to N minus 1. So we substitute all the r with n minus 1, r with n minus 1. So when we simplify, then we'll get this one. So you can see that the term with the same denominator, 1 is negative, 1 is positive. So this one will be cancelled off with this one. So sure, this term will be cancelled off with the term before this. So now this is the term that remains. So therefore, now we list out all the terms that remain. That is the first term at the beginning of the series and the last term at the end of the series. So means this is your answer for the sum of the series. But in case the question say that, give your answer in the simplest form. Means we need to combine all these fraction becomes one single fraction. That is, first you need to combine the denominator, combine the de denominator, then 3 times n, n plus 1, this one times 2. Then when you need to simplify the numerator, when you simplify the numerator, you will get a quadratic. When you get a quadratic, we must double check whether the quadratic can be factorized. If yes, then we must factorize the quadratic. Then finally, we combine the final answer in a single fraction. That is the meaning by give your answer in simplest form. 
So that's all for now. Do you understand what you learned today? If you have any question, let me know in Teacher Eileen Matt's group. If you find that this video is useful, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you keep on learning and keep on watching my videos. And I hope to see you soon. Bye.